Okay. Assalamualaikum and also good morning. Okay, for today, basically we will start chapter 10. Okay, chapter 10 basically covering the design of feedback control system. The only thing within this chapter, because this chapter is a uh, combining the method that we learned in chapter 7 and also the method in chapter 8 and 9 which is involving the frequency domain. The only thing chapter 7 and 9, uh, chapter 8 and 9 basically I didn't cover. So if you look at this section, basically I will cover section introduction approach to system design, cascade compensation networks, and then anything with the board diagram, we won't cover. Okay, we just cover something with the root lockers. Phase lead design using root lockers. Okay, system design using integrated integration networks. Okay, and then phase like design using root lockers. And then this one also we don't cover. Face like design using board diagram. Okay, we omit that. And then design on board diagram using analytical method. This one also we omitted. And then we just go system with a pre-filter and also design for dead bit response. Okay, so those section that I will be covering. Okay, in this chapter. I think before this, in chapter 7, we have already done a little bit design using parametric design using the root lockers. Okay. And uh, this chapter basically specifically talking about the design of feedback control system. Okay. I will explain the approach to control system design. Okay. This is section 10.1. And then I will, uh, the section 10.2, Approach to System Design. And then we have talking about the Cascade Compensation Network, 10.3. Okay, so this is what we will cover in this lecture today. Okay, so whatever you have learned in the previous chapter will help you in understanding. Okay, although in chapter 1 we have talked a little bit about the introduction to the control system, uh, talking about the design goal and so on, on and configuration. Okay, here we will talk more on the uh, control system design. Okay, when we talk about a, a control system, basically for a suitable control system, okay, the control system should be a stable system. Okay. We have talked before in chapter 6 about the stability. Okay, especially when we introducing a closed loop control system, it may become unstable. Okay, and so in order we need to use the closed loop control system, we need to make sure that the system is stable. And then before also we have talked about the, uh, this is the results in an acceptable response to input command. Okay, this is the response when we give the input a command value. For example, if we give a unit step uh, input, okay, and then uh, we will produce the response, okay, and the response should be acceptable, okay. I think uh, last time when we have talked about the performance, okay. We have discussed a little bit what is the uh, shape of the uh, response that is basically we can say acceptable. And then I think in chapter 4 also we have talking about the uh, sensitivity. Okay. So when we have a control system, a suitable control system should be less sensitive okay, to system parameter change. Okay, this is important uh, in order to make sure that your response is always is like the one that you are desire. Okay, it's not affected by the change in the parameter. And then 
Another thing, uh, we talk about in chapter 4 and chapter 5 about the steady state error, either because of the input or because of the disturbance. Okay? Normally, if we have a, a control system, we wanted a control system having, if possible, zero steady state error. But if not possible, at least the steady state error will be minimum. And then, uh, we talk also about the uh, disturbance in chapter 4. Okay. Okay. So when we have a control system, we should be able to reduce the effect of the disturbance. So basically, if you have a disturbance, that means the disturbance should not change your or desire uh, response. Okay. And we have learned also that when we talking about the performance, okay, the, op the optimum performance can be achieved with parameter adjustment. Okay. Of course, uh, when we uh, do the measurement of the performance, there are five measurement of the performance we can do. Okay. Normally, we can adjust certain parameter to get certain performance measure good. Okay. But however, what we find that at some of the performance measure are contradicting, okay, which need trade off among the complete conflicting specification. Conflicting, uh, conflicting specification may limit parameter adjustment to obtain the desired performance, which require considering the structure of the system, okay. Uh, normally, when we he try to adjust certain parameter for improving one of the performance measure, maybe the other performance measure will be affected, will become worse. Okay? So that is called as a conflicting in, in of, the adjust, uh, of the specification. Okay? So in that case, normally uh, what happened, one way is uh, because by doing that we cannot adjust the parameter anymore okay and the best way is to change the structure of the system and what happened when we change the structure of the par uh, of the system okay basically it will change the root locus okay the root locus will change when you change the structure of the system okay Thus, the design of a control system is concerned with the arrangement or the plan of the system structure and the selection of suitable component and parameter. Okay? So, basically, what we can say here, okay, you, if you have a plan and then you get, the, you model the, uh, the plan, okay, you get the and then if you plot the root locus for the plant and you find that the root locus of the plant is fall inside the specification area in the S plane okay so you don't have difficulty to adjust the parameter okay the gain parameter or whatever parameter that you need to adjust okay because since the root locus is falling inside the specification area you can find a roots somewhere located in the uh, area which fulfill your specification okay but in the case where your root locus doesn't fall in the specification area okay uh, if you adjust your parameter is useless because the root that you get will always outside the specification area okay so for that case basically what we need to do is we need to change the structure because when we change the structure actually we change uh, the structure by adding the pole and zero okay and when we add the pole and zero, 
Okay, we have extra pole and zero. Basically, your root locus will change. Okay, and when you your root locus have changed, okay, maybe your uh, your uh, root locus now will go inside the area of the specification. Okay, and then after that you can adjust your parameter so that you can find the root uh, which are located in the uh, in the specification area okay so that's basically is that we need to do in design okay when we do the design okay when we do the alteration of the control system in order to provide a, a suitable performance and make up the deficiency this is called as compensation okay because we want to change the root locus we need to add either pole or zeros okay in the system okay because we adding the pole and zero to the system uh, instead of the pole and zero that you have in the plants a transfer function okay so basically you are adding a compensation in redesigning a control system to alter the system response, an additional component is inserted within the structure of the feedback system. Okay, so a compensator is an additional component or circuit that is inserted into a control system to compensate for a deficient performance. Okay, so basically, he if you have a system that cannot fulfill your specification okay basically your system may be need an extra additional pole or zero so that it can improve its performance okay so that is basically a compensator so a compensator may be electrical hydraulic pneumatics or other device or either mechan even mechanical as well Okay, but commonly electrical circuit serve as a compensator. Okay, so when we try to add pole or zero, additional pole or zero, beside the pole and zero that exists in the plant transfer function, okay, basically we add another pole and we can add using any system actually even using mechanical system also can be done electrical system hydraulic system pneumatic system okay the only thing uh, nowadays uh, most engineers utilizing electrical system okay to add the compensator because why because electrical system is easier to add okay compare with other system okay you can add mechanical system if you wanted okay but normally the mechanical system is is quite more difficult okay R compared to electrical system and in fact with the electrical system also nowadays some of the system also can be implemented by using computer as well so that's why people are more prefer to add the compensator using the electrical system. Okay, the transfer function of a compensator is designed as uh, when we add a compensator, okay, basically we add either pole or zero in the compensator. And because of that, the compensator basically has its transfer function where the transfer function need to be determined by us because normally like the plan we need to derive it from the uh, physical system of the plan okay but for this compensator because it is from us so you need to decide what is the equation what is the transfer function okay the compensator can be placed in a suitable location within the structure of the system okay another thing is that 
when we're designing it, okay, we can put the compensator anywhere in the configuration of the closed loop. Okay? And there are uh, four different ways we can do. Okay? There are four types of compensation referring to the location of the compensator. Okay, for example, one of them, okay, if we put the compensator, the GC, okay, between the comparator and also the process, okay, and this type of compensation is called as cascade compensation or sometimes it is called as series compensation, okay, because the compensator are put in series between this one, the uh, comparator, and also the process. And then the other type of compensator is when we locate the GC, the compensator, okay, after the sensor. Okay, after, after the feedback component. Okay, this is the sensor. Okay, so we locate it here before the comparator. Okay, and this system is called as a feedback compensation because we locate them after the uh, feedback component. Okay, and then the third type of compensator is called as output compensation or sometimes it is called as a load compensation okay in this case the GC S is located okay right after the loops okay before the output and then the fourth one the fourth type of compensator is called as input compensation or sometimes it is called also as pre-filter where the GC is located after the input RS before the comparator so you can choose either type in order to implement your uh, controller okay Okay, the selection of the compensation scheme depends upon a consideration of the specification, the power level at various nodes in the system, and the network availability for use. Okay? And there, uh, actually, there is no uh, strict uh, guide how we select this. Okay? What you can do, you can try either one of it okay which work uh, for you so the output compensation is not physically re realizable because the system output normally direct process output for this type of compensation normally difficult for us to realize in in a in a system okay because usually we wanted to measure the output okay but if we put it somewhere here because it is already out of the loops okay so uh, actually it is is difficult because we are not monitoring the feedback because of 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 the controller okay because the feedback is only here okay let's look to the approach to the system design the performance of a control system can be described in terms of time domain performance measure okay i think in chapter 5 we have learned this percentage of overshoot settling time steady state error for input or for disturbance and then the peak time and also the rest time okay so that's basically the performance measure uh, where uh, basically we use this to check whether our system will meet the specification or not okay after we designing our system 
Okay, this performance specification can be specified by the location of the poles and zero of the feedback transfer function in S plane. Uh, okay, as we have discussed also in chapter 5, knowing the performance of the system, we can point out in the S plane where the location of the pole should be and when the location of the zero should be. So that's uh, by doing that, basically we know the area of specification in the S plane. Okay, we where our system should meet. Okay, the root locus of the system can be readily obtained for the variation of one param uh, one system parameter. Okay, and when we have the uh, transfer function of the system, we can plot the root locus. Okay, on the S plane. And then we can determine whether that root locus is falling inside the uh, the specification area. Okay. However, when the root locus does not result in a suitable co uh, root configuration, okay, a compensating network must be added to alter the root locus as the parameter is varied. Okay. Sometime when we already draw the area of the specification in the S plane based on the performance uh, that is specified. Okay. And then after that, we draw the root locus for the uh, open loop system, which is the, uh, uh, the plan or, or the process transfer function. Okay. And if we find that the root locus is not crossing at all the area of the uh, performance specified, okay, and then what we need to do, we need to add a compensator, okay, so that by adding this compensator, later on we will adjust uh, the, uh, we will modify the root locus. Therefore, the root locus method can determine a suitable compensator network transfer function for desired root configuration. Okay. So, beside the other method which is in the uh, in the frequency domain, okay, in time domain, basically root lockers are used heavily in designing the compensator uh, for a control system. Okay, quite often in practice, the best and easiest way to improve the performance of a control system is to alter, if possible, the process itself. Of course, if we are given a, uh, if we are given the opportunity to change the process, we can change the process. But normally, as control engineer, normally we don't have this advantage. Because normally the design is given, we are not designing that uh, process. Okay, the process is normally designed by others. Okay, so the only thing we need to design the control system only. Okay, so that's why uh, we have no. Uh, okay, we have only. Uh, able to improve the system by adding the compensator okay however the process is often unalterable and has been altered as much as possible and still results in unsatisfactory performance okay for example normally sometimes if we have a system which involve a motor okay when the process which involve a motor and the main important uh, component in the motor is the inertia, okay? And sometimes, um, if we are given to opportunity to alter the process, that means we are able to alter the motor. Normally, for motor, it is difficult for us to alter the, the, the weight of the rotor. Okay, because that will cause the inertia of the system and 
because the motor normally it, the weight of the rotor normally heavy okay and sometimes it is difficult for us to reduce the weight okay and because of that the inertia uh, normally remain a problem for us to change okay that's why uh, in this case uh, this is uh, not an option for us to alter the process then the additional of compensation network become useful for improving the performance of the system okay that's why as the control uh, control engineer we are only able to add the compensation in order to improve the system out of so many uh, compensation network the four compensation network okay the most famous uh, compensation network being used is cascade compensation networks where we locate the compensator okay between the comparator and also the process okay for the compensation network uh, the compensation network is cascaded with the unalterable process in order to provide a suitable loop transfer function so the compensator that will alter the shape of the root locus have a transfer function like this okay so basically the compensator transfer function which is the gc okay normally have the general transfer function like this where if you look at this we will have a gain we may have a gain uh, normally we have a proportional gain k and then we may have or may not have zeros okay either one zeros or multiple of zeros and we may have also poles okay or multiples of poles okay so basically when we add the compensator like this basically we are adding the pole and zero to the system okay the only thing we need to select the suitable poles and zeros of the compensator to reshape the root locus because when we add this pole and zero to the system later on what will happen it will reshape the root locus okay because as we learn in the root locus the root locus basically depend on the the number of poles and the number of zeros right because it always started from the poles and it will end at the zeros okay and the number of the locus also will depend on the number of the poles okay let's consider the first order cascade compensator with the transfer function like this let's say we just say that our uh, cascade compensator okay having a transfer function like this we call it first order because we have only one zero and one pole only okay so the location of the zero is indicated by the z and the location of the poles is indicated by p okay and k is basically the gain value and then if we are adding this compensator to our system okay basically in your design okay you need to determine what should be the value of the z the value of the p and the value of the k okay so when you decide you determine this value of these three parameter basically you have completed your design okay if the uh, design later on fulfill the uh, specification okay it provide the suitable performance for your system one methods in cascade compensation okay is called as a phase lead compensation it is similar that we need to 
we'll add one pole and one zero. Okay. Where well, later on we need to determine what is the value of k, value of z, and value of p. Okay. The only thing with this phase lead compensation, the location of the poles and zero is that we need to locate them in such a way that the zero should be smaller than the p. The absolute zero is smaller than absolute p. What does it mean? I mean that the zero should be closer to the imaginary axis, right? Compared to the to the poles. Okay. So that means when we add a pole and zero, okay, we should locate in such a way that the location of the zero uh, should be nearer to the imaginary axis compared to the location of the pole to the imaginary axis. Okay? So this is called as phase lead compensa uh, compensation. And when we add this type of compensator, okay, the compensator becomes differentiator. If the pole is negligible, that means if the location of the pole compared to this one, this one is much, much bigger. Basically, it's, it's far away here. Of course, last time when we said that if the pole location from the imaginary axis is very, very far, we can say that it, the effect is negligible. Right? When we talk about the Okay, when we talk about the third pole last time, okay, we said that if this pole is located far away here, basically the effect to the uh, response can be negligible, okay? And if, we, if this jack is too small compared to here, maybe it will become somewhere which is uh, the zero may be occur at the origins, okay? If the zero is occur at the origin and this one is far away and can be negligible, and then this compensator will act like a differentiator because the z will equal to the z will equal to zero. So basically, you will have your your zero become s plus zero okay and your poles will become um, s plus infinity okay so that will give the effect as if we multiplying with s right so when we multiply with s basically the effect is as if we are adding differentiator. Okay? So the first lead compensation basically will act as as differentiator. Okay? So this is the equation where at the end the GC will act like this. K divided by the poles okay, multiplied by S. That's why we consider uh, the effect like a differentiator. Okay, the phase lead compensation transfer function can be obtained with electrical circuit. Okay, and if you want to do it physically, okay, you can easily add a, an electrical circuit. Okay, uh, and it is not difficult. You just need a three component only, two resistor and one capacitor. Okay, so if you add this three component and put it in in the configuration like this where R1 and R2 in series and then the capacitor parallel with the R1 okay okay this one for this circuit you can check in chapter 2 okay in chapter 2 in one of the tables there is a configuration like this and it shows also the derivation of the equation for the transfer function for this uh, the ratio between 
V2 against V1. Okay? Where basically you will get this is the equation. And then this equation, if you rearrange this equation, okay? For example, in this case, maybe we just rearrange so that this equation become like this. Okay? And then after that, you simplify that you replace tau 1 by, by this equation, multiply by C, and then alpha become this one. Okay? And if you replace the here, uh, this one, with this one, you will get this equation. Okay? And then with this equation, basically you can rearrange it so that it will become in, in the form of this. Right? So you know that is the top is the zero. Okay? And this one is the pole. Okay? And from if you relate this to equation, okay, basically the pole will become 1 divided by tau or basically R1 plus R2 divided by R1 and multiply by R2 and then you need to multiply with C. Okay? And then for the zero, basically it is equal to this one, 1 divided by alpha multiply by tau. Okay, you have tau here and then you have alpha here. Okay, so you get for the zero. Okay? So with this, basically, okay, later on, okay, if you want to implement it, okay, because you, knew, you need to find the correct value of the Z and the correct value of the P. Once you determine the correct value of the Z and correct value of the P, okay, what you can do, you can find the correct value for R1, R2, and also C, these three components, okay? In order to get the value of the, the correct value of the Z and to get the correct value of the P, okay? So that's once if you know already the, if you determine already the value of Z and the value of P, okay? Basically, you can reverse to find what is the value of R1, what is the value of R2, what is value of the capacitor. And then you can put it in your circuit. Okay? The only thing now is that we need to find the value of the Z and we need to find the value of the P. Okay? In order uh, for our design for the phase lead compensator. Okay? We will talk about that later on. Okay? Okay, another... Uh, method of designing uh, a cascade compensator is called a phase lag compensation. Okay, this one also the same. We are also applying the first order. Uh, we are adding a zero and also a poles. Okay, so we need to decide what is the value of the Z, what is the value of the P, and then what is the value of the K. Okay. The only thing with the face lag design, okay, face lag design, face lag network has a pole zero configuration of the location of the P must be less than the location of the zero. So it is reverse actually. If we have the location of the zero here, the P must be less than the zero in this side, the poles, okay? And if you have this one, basically it is called as phase lag compensation. The compensator network is often called integrating network, okay? Uh, when we have this one, it's actually the effect when we applying this compensator, it will become like integrating network. Okay, so remember just now when we have a phase lead compensation, it become like inter uh, it become like integrator. But when we do this way, it will become like integrator. Okay, so it is acting as if you multiply with one over s. 
So the first light compensation transfer function can be obtained with the electrical circuit also. Okay. And surprisingly, it's utilizing the same component as well. Resistor 1, resistor 2, and also a capacitor. The only thing, the circuit is different. Okay. You arrange all three of them in series. Okay. And then the output you tap from between R1 and R2. Okay. And this is the input. Okay. You can check this circuit in chapter 2 in one of the tables. Okay. With that, basically, with this circuit, the transfer function is equal to this one. Okay. The V out divided by V in is basically equal to R2 plus 1 over capacitor multiplied by S divided by R1 plus R2 plus 1 over capacitor multiplied by S. Okay. Or if we rearrange this equation, basically at the end we can arrange also this equation become like this. Okay. Where the tau is equal to R2 multiplied by capacitor and then the alpha is become R1 plus R2 divided by R2. Okay. And then you can also rearrange the equation become like 0 divided by poles. The only thing here, there is 1 over alpha. Okay. This is considered as the gain. K. Okay. 1 over alpha is equal to the gain. Okay, and then the zeta basically is equal to 1 over tau. Okay, basically tau is equal to this. So it basically become 1 divided by R2C. And then the pole is become 1 divided by alpha, alpha tau. So here is also the same thing. Okay. You need to design in order to determine the value of the K, to determine the value of the Z, and the, to determine the value of P. Okay? With that three value, basically later on, if you determine all the, those three value, you can determine what should be the value of R1, R2, and also the capacitance value. So the only thing, what we need to do next is to learn how for us to determine the value of the K, and the value of the Z and also the value of P. Any question up to now? You have learned right in chapter 2 how to get the transfer function from electrical circuit. In fact, this equation is just we got it from the table that is in chapter 2. Okay, because there is one table has already simplified uh, the derivation of all the physical system, right? Actually, in the exam, normally I didn't ask you to do this lah, because I normally will ask you how to determine this value of K, Z, and P. Okay. The, the only thing, this one, uh, why I, I presented it to you, so that you can relate it with the physical system. Okay. Basically, later on, if you get the value of the K, Z, and P, what do you need to do? Because people will say that your what I'm teaching is not practical. Okay? Yes. Okay? So that is why if you later on want to implement physically, basically you can and just utilizing this, this capacitor and so on. Okay? In fact, it's not necessarily to use this system only. Okay? Once you know the value of K, Z, and also P, okay? If you have a mechanical system, you want to implement using mechanical system, okay? Just uh, get the derivation that it can relate the Z, P, and also the K with the mechanical system component, okay? Parameter, okay? So you can utilize that. Okay, as summary, the design, the design of control, you have learned the design of a control system is concerned with the arrangement or the plan of the system structure and the selection of suitable component and parameter. And you have learned also a compensator is an additional component 
or circuit that is inserted into a control system to compensate for a deficient performance. There are four types of compensation referring to the location of the compensator and the root locus method can determine a suitable compensator network transfer function for desired root configuration. And then the compensation network is cascaded with the unalterable process in order to provide a suitable loop transfer function. So what you have, what you have learned basically is become a foundation for designing feedback control system. Okay? Okay, see you tomorrow.